I want to show you some paint guns that I want to recommend for the high build stuff that are basically cheap throwaway guns you get at Harbor Freight. So check it out. What is up everybody? We are back at it out here at DTV once again. I got some epoxy primer laid down as well as some high build primer on the 67 Mustang. So I'll turn the camera around, show you guys that. We got it sitting outside and then I have a couple parts here that I have to go ahead and throw some primer on today. But I want to show you the car before we got too far ahead. And then also I want to show you some paint guns that I want to recommend for the high build stuff that are basically cheap throwaway guns you get at Harbor Freight. So check it out. Let me spin you around and uh, show you what's up. All right, so here's the Mustang outside in all its glory. So as you can see, we're all one color now, so it makes it look a lot nicer. You can see how the body works actually starting to really come together. When it's all hodgepodge mismatched from all the sanding, unless you know what you're looking at. I think every car in the world has to drive by right now, right? So when it's not one color and it's all hodgepodge, it's hard to really see what you're looking at, but you can see now because of shadows and, and whatnot where the shape actually is on the vehicle. And you can see how close and decent we are as far as where the body work is, especially these areas that I hit with the heavy fill work is what I like to call it. So that is looking pretty good. We got jams done too. So anywhere we're gonna uh, obviously sand and paint. And then onto these animals. I gotta get around the lettering a little bit better, knock this down, you can see a little guide coat in here. So you just touch these little spots and then make sure there's no hand fingerprints, surface rust, because these have been sitting open for a little while. So I'll probably give it a once over real quick with the DA just to make sure there's nothing hiding. Same with this. Um, yeah, I don't think these really got handled very, very much. I stripped them and they sat, luckily. People like to touch the car and lean on the car. Um, Oh, there you go. So there's a good example of that'll just get zipped off with the DA. And I think this is just from picking it up a minute ago. But make sure there's no oils or anything on it, obviously, so we don't have any issues. So we'll clean these real good, wipe them all down, get them into high build. And then these will stay that way. That way I can handle them. And we'll flip them over because the bottom sides need to get painted too. Granted, I'm not doing any body work on the bottom sides of either one of these. We're going to strip the weather stripping off scuff and shoot the bottoms on both of these. So that's a much quicker process. Uh, we're not gonna get all crazy on that. So I also have a couple parts down here, um, namely the little piece there and then this piece that will get primer. These guys can, it doesn't matter because I think they're like aluminum, cast aluminum. And then this guy over here, I have to take this out of the package. It's brand new, it's a front balance. That will just get scuffed, epoxied. Um, I don't know if I'll high build it, we'll see if there's any damage from when it was shipped. But first things first, we'll knock these guys out, kind of let the dust settle, and then we'll move on to the little parts. Um, hopefully we have time for that. So that's where I'm at on this. Hopefully we can get to blocking this thing. So here you guys go real quick before I forget. I use these and go through them probably every couple jobs. I'll get another kit. I wish they sold this gun by itself, but you gotta buy them in the 2Z. This kit is 50 bucks from Harbor Freight, so if you got a discount coupon for the 25% off whatever you can use that. But the reason I buy this kit in particular is it has the 1.8 tip on the big guy. And then that's interchangeable, I think, but I don't care, I keep the biggest one that they got on it. And what I do is I use this for the poly primer uh, high build, and this is just a garden hose. You can load it up and you just let it rip. Try to keep it clean, but eventually it'll get you, the threads get gummed up, the whole gun will kind of quit just working and then it ends up in the trash can. So that's why I like to buy this. Like I said, if I get two jobs per pack of these, you figure it's 50 bucks. So that's $25 it costs me per job to have a gun that will actually lay out some product. Um, again, my good gun is, is cheap by gun standards. It's a SADA but I can't throw sodas in the trash can every couple jobs. I just, you know, we'd 
nobody makes that much money. I mean, I guess if you're awesome and your foos or can dig it or something, they probably could, but they're smart enough not to do that either. But this one, when it goes to the uh, paint gods in the sky, it's not that painful. And by that point, you've used the hell out of it. You've made your money back and then some. So, um, and this little jam gun actually works pretty well. The only problem with this gun is where this threads in is all plastic. And then these things get kind of mucked up when you, if you take it off to clean it and you go to put it back in and it starts threading crooked, then it's done and you're screwed and then it leaks and then the whole thing is trash. But if you leave it alone and kind of take care of it, this little jam gun actually performs really well. Um, I do like it. I actually have another one over here from the last batch I bought because the little jam gun didn't go bad. See, she's all dirty and old and it still functions. It's super dirty, but it's funny, they work good. Um, yeah, you can see how responsible I am with these little cheap guns, but still works, so I just kind of throw it in here as a backup plan in case, you know, stuff ever hits the fan. And then this is my SADA. This is another cheap Harbor Freight um, jam gun. This thing works bitchin'. Puts out a bigger spray pattern than I have the LPH-80. This is a really nice gun. Really small pattern detail work, though. So like on an actual jam situation, I use this thing a lot. Or even like that race lawnmower that I painted. It was actually done with that. And then obviously my real gun. And one of these days, I'm gonna go to Coast Airbrush and talk to Jason and see about getting a big boy paint gun considering that's kind of what I'm doing over here. So if you are in the market and you're a do-it-yourselfer and you wanna actually paint your car, I would advise to get this for the high build primers because if you spend any money on any sort of gun, even a cheap set of like finish line guns or whatever, I don't even know what cheap guns people run, um, you wanna run your poly primer through this, especially if you're an amateur, because chances are you may forget to clean stuff out or let it sit in the pot too long and when it gets hard, your gun is junk. So if you junk this, you're not gonna cry that much because it was 50 bucks and then at least you still get this little guy to use on projects. Um, if you junk a good gun, I mean, they range from 500 to like $1,000. Granted, yes, you can clean the gun, but the poly prime, once it's hardened, it sucks, man. So, do yourself a favor, pick one of these up, load it up with some high build primer, point it at your favorite car and let it rip. So that's where we're at as far as where the Mustang um, sits as of right now. So now that it has high build primer on it, I can actually put guide coat on that, which I can show you guys if you're interested or not. And then you use that to block sand against that way, you know, when it's flat. Um, there are a couple little things when I was wiping it down, I found that I am uh, missed, I guess you could say, on there. But it's funny because when you do body work, the softball size dent isn't really the issue because everybody knows that that thing is there. It's all the little dings and, and other dents that you didn't pay attention to because you had the giant one. As soon as the giant dent goes away and that's nice and flat, well, that little dent that was two feet away from it you didn't know you had, that pops up and you're like, where did this come from? Well, it's been there the whole time. It was just hiding in the shadow of its big brother, the softball size dent or the basketball or depending on how bad it is, the wadded up quarter panel or front fender or whatever you got rolling. So that is it. Let's all be somebody, shall we?